if you ever opened a webpack generated file you should see a lot of runtime code and that code which is generated by webpack is needed because webpack um, with the help of it will achieve its main features which are many in this video i would like to walk you through such generated code to see that it is not that scaring as it might seem in the beginning but before we do that i would like to briefly uh, talk about chunks so what chunks are they are essentially the files that webpack will generate after the bundling process there are different type of chunks one of them for example when you use the import function a chunk will be created for that uh, module that you want to import as well as for the dependencies of that module and the dependencies of the dependencies and so on so this will be a kind of chunk the async chunk and the other type of chunk there might be others as well uh, which i might not know yet but but for sure um, a different kind of chunk is the one that is created with the help or as a result of using the entry option in webpack so for that i have prepared a small example notice that here i'm using the entry option and notice that i'm also providing a path not a, not a file not a specific file what webpack will do in this case is to pick the index.js file by default so because we have used an entry we will end up with a chunk this kind of chunk is also known as entry chunk so in this video we will see what the runtime code of an entry chunk looks like let's quickly run this um, let's run webpack on this small app and also notice that we are using the html webpack plugin just to inject the index.js bundle into a, into an html file just to uh, make things a bit easier i suppose okay let's see what we have in this index file we are importing two different modules with the help of the import function and this is important because if we had used for example the import function we would end up having different chunks or multiple chunks and such import which is also known as harmony import it will not create new chunks it will simply um, keep those modules that are imported and those dependencies and the dependencies of those dependencies and so on it will keep all of them into the same chunk and with this i also want to say that a chunk besides the runtime code will contain modules and modules at least in the beginning they um, map to files so you can think of a module as a file for now okay um, i should also mention that this full file has also a dependency um, and this will be important when we will, when we will examine the, um, the generated code and let's do that now so um, if we open this index.html file we should see that index bundle has been imported and now let's um, let's see what this file contains so as i said webpack will have a lot of generated code my plan for this video is to walk you through uh, some parts of it because not all of them are relevant but in the end uh, or in the beginning we should see that um, webpack first of all will have an array of all of the modules that are part of this chunk this this chunk that I'm, I'm talking about this index bundle and we should be able to recognize some modules for example the first module they are uh, uh, indexed as you can see because uh, they are declared in an array so the first module is uh, local lib which is this one then on the second or although technically this is the third element in the array um, this is its index is two as you might have expected so the second module that we have in this in this chunk because once again this index bundle js is a chunk the second module is hello from foo which is the foo file it is this function here 
and lastly we have foo dep which is the dependency of foo and as you might have noticed um, we have declared in the webpack config the enter like this which will which is the same thing as declaring the index file as the entry so once again an entry will result always in or I think almost always because I don't know the entire webpack yet or I don't think I will ever do but in this case or most of, in most of the times an entry will result into a chunk and that chunk is an entry chunk and that chunk will contain modules and in this case the entry module of that entry chunk is index and that entire chunk will contain all of the modules that are imported via the import statement such as these ones so it will contain all of the entry modules because you can have more and it will and it will contain all of the dependencies of those entry modules and the dependencies of the dependencies and so on so that's why we see all of the three chunks here in the same chunk later on we see I would say this is the most important part and this is in my opinion the gist of this video because this webpack require function is used in a lot of places and this function uh, also has some properties declared on it so that it can be used across other chunks but this is a topic for a different video but let's quickly see what it does so um, you can see that webpack has a, ch um, a cache so that and th the reason it does this is because you, you might have noticed that modules are declared as functions so the first time a module will be imported it will invoke its corresponding function so that to populate the cache even more and the next time it will be imported or re required it will serve the exports because those are what uh, matter in the end it will return the exports right away as you can see here if a module is cached it will Im uh, it will return is uh, its exports otherwise it will create a module which contains the exports property then it will invoke the function that corresponds to that module and once again notice that here it is referring to the webpack modules array which is here um, and of course this function webpack require is provided to the function that corresponds to the module because that module might require other modules as well and you need to have the same function in order to have a very big um, cache object I think this is the reasoning as to why Webpack has done this because for example here at foo uh, this would be the foo file we have the Webpack require function and see how it is also using that function in order to require this module and by calling this function it will end up invoking this part here and in this way hopefully you should see how the cache is populated now um, I think this is the most uh, important part of that of this file at this moment one last thing that I would like to do is to go with the debugger to see uh, things hopefully a bit more clearly so for that I'm going to open the index bundle file and I'm going to uh, this part uh, is not of interest for now and I'm going to place a breakpoint here when we want to import foo that JS because things are a bit more interesting in this case because foo that JS also has a dependency so if we hit refresh uh, the breakpoint has stopped and if we step into we are going through the function as I've said earlier so we are putting the f uh, module with the module ID 2 which should be this one here so as you might have noticed this is what these numbers here indicate they are the modules ID so um, first of all we check the cache it is not cached 
then we prepare to execute the function that corresponds to that module and at the same time the cache will be populated because this is what this does so this is a very smart thing um, or a smart way to write things if we go into this function we are now into the function that corresponds to module with the ID 2 which is foojs uh, what this does is not very relevant for now so I won't bother with that but if we um, go one step further now with this D it uh, defines the exports I think D is for defining property if I'm not wrong um, anyway it doesn't matter now what I want to highlight is that so when we want so when we wanted to import module 2 the module with the module ID 2 we also provide the same webpack required function which is this one and this is once again to populate the big cache this function is once again used here and guess what happens next is we will end up going through the same function again where we want to import the module with the ID 3 we check the cache it doesn't exist we create a new cache entry and when and then we we repeat the process we execute the function that corresponds to module 3 which is full depth and nothing else happens here but notice that um, at this point let's also walk through it why not so webpack required that d what it does in the end is to define the property and in this case the property is webpack exports so what this does in the end is to populate this export object because as you might have seen we are we also provide this argument here and when everything is done the cache will be populated and uh, later on when these modules would be needed again um, those functions that corresponds to those objects won't be invoked again uh, and uh, their exports will be returned uh, when they are uh, uh, imported okay um, I think this is what I want to show you in this video um, first of all it is not that uh, scaring as it might have seen in the beginning um, and it is not that hard to place a breakpoint and walk through it um, in, in my opinion uh, it is worth the effort um, and I guess I will see you in the next video thank you